This video is going to show you how to create a mug that features texture and darts. So materials that you need for this mug, you need a chunk of clay. I like to take a chunk of clay about this size. I prefer to use red clay for this, but any kind of clay body will do just fine. You wanna have a board or newspaper, some surface to roll on outside of just a table. You want a rolling pin. If you're doing this from home, you don't have access to a rolling pin. You could get creative with materials. You could use, um, you could use a soup can, maybe a spray paint bottle, or anything cylindrical that you can think of that would work, right? You also are going to need something to imprint texture on. Um, I have here a texture plate that I'm going to roll on. You could use any kind of tool um, even like the back of a pen or something to imprint texture on, the bottom of your shoe. Um, you could roll leaves or flowers, lots of different things that you could get creative and find to use texture. A fork from your kitchen. I'm also going to use a fenneling knife. You could use a butter knife if you're doing this from home. And then I have two additional tools. I have just a clay tool that's going to help me with um, any smoothing that I may need to do and in addition I have a scoring tool here this tool you could also use a needle tool this tool almost reminds me of a rake and it has a bunch of little edges that are going to make scoring much easier in addition to that I do have slip and I just make my slip by watering down some clay you can also use water to do this, but if you have clay, you might as well take some time, mix a water into it, and make yourself some slip. All right, so the first step to this is going to be getting your slab the correct thickness. So I like to start, rather than starting out by rolling out a big chunk of clay, I'm gonna start by tossing it. And as I toss this clay, I'm going to toss it towards me And every time I toss it, I'm going to rotate it. You can see how it's stretching out already. Now, since this is a mug, these are not going to be very tall. So I'm actually only gonna be stretching my clay in one direction. You can see how the more I toss it, the more it's stretching itself out. I have not even used my rolling pin yet, and it gets pretty uniform. All right, I'm at the point now where I am ready to use my rolling pin. My slab itself is about three quarters of an inch thick at this point. I need my slab to be about a half inch thick. So when I use my rolling pin, I always like to push outward. I don't use the handles. In fact, this one is even missing one of the handles. I'm going to take, push outward, rotate, Maybe lift it up to make sure that it's not sticking and push outward. Do this while you are standing up. And I also like to rotate or flip in between. The goal here is that we have a uniform slab. It is not really thin in certain parts and really thick in others. We want it to be about a half inch all the way through. We're not gonna get it perfect because we are humans. We'll just get it as good as we can. This is where you're gonna find if you are doing this on just your tabletop. I almost guarantee that as you go and pick this up, it's going to get stuck to your table. So always work on a board or lay out some newspaper to be working on as well. Now I can take, this is going to be way more than enough clay. I can take it here and I want roughly Oh, about a half an inch, maybe a little bit less, okay? Now, just a little tip, anytime you have extra clay sitting here, instead of leaving your clay just sit in small chunks off to the side, I always take it, especially with red clay because it does dry out really fast, I will always take this, put this together, compress it into a ball, and I can leave it uncovered or I could cover this up, put it in a Ziploc bag if I'd like, but if you have your clay compressed together like this, it's not going to, there's a, a, a lesser likelihood that it is going to dry out. The next thing that I have here is I have a template and this is the template that I'm going to be using for my mug. Now my template, 
um, actually is just a bottle of glaze. You could get creative at home, use a soup can would work perfect. Uh, maybe you have a cup that you could be using. Whatever you're going to use, we're going to form, we're going to form this mug around this so that it holds its shape. But if you're, whatever you're going to be using, make sure that you either newspaper or paper towel, tape it on here. If I were to just roll this up nice and tight on my glaze container, it's going to get stuck. So I'm gonna keep it like this. So once I have this rolled out, my slab is uniform. My next step is adding my texture. So whatever you're going to do to add your texture, you wanna go ahead and add it here. I'm using this texture stamp. So I'm gonna choose this side. We rolled out our slabs a little thicker than we need them because as we add texture, you might notice we're pressing down a little bit. So our slab is actually flattening it out. If you can see that, my texture imprinted really nicely here. I'm gonna try to do my best, line this up and press it in. However you're adding your texture, you wanna make sure that texture goes on nice and deep. We are gonna be choosing glazes that enhance our texture, and if our texture is not on deep, it will just go away as we build our projects. So here, I have my texture imprinted on. From here, this is where we're going to get into using our template. Now here, I have more than enough clay to stretch. So I'm actually going to take, use my clay knife, and I might cut up to the edge of my texture. This is extra clay, I'll add it to my extra clay pile. Um, I also am going to cut one of my edges really nicely. So you could use a ruler to do this if you'd like. Um, maybe if you have like a flat piece of cardboard to run it along, that might be a good choice. I'm just looking around here for something that I have. I have a ruler that I'm going to use. I don't like to eyeball this because I almost always get it wrong. Um, I'm going to cut this to slightly larger than the height I want this to be. So in the end, if I want this to be the exact same height as my, um, as my glaze container here, I wanna cut it maybe a little bit bigger. I don't want mine to be quite so tall because it's going to be a mug. I don't like a tall mug. I like my mugs to be a little shorter. So what I'm going to do, I can always trim some off if I'd like, but I'm gonna start with this. So I want a nice rectangular piece of clay. Ooh, it's roughly an inch thick. It has texture on one side. That's going to be the outside. I would not want texture on the inside because that's a spot where if I'm using this for coffee or hot cocoa, um, some bacteria might gather there if it's not washed properly. So we want the insides to be nice and smooth. From here, I'm going to very carefully, and this is why we wanted to put our texture in very deep, I'm going to carefully flip this over so that my texture is on the bottom of my board, and now I'm going to roll this up. So I've just gone ahead and gotten myself a cup of water, because red clay, whenever you stretch it, you have to kind of coax it with some water. So I like to take a little bit of water here and rub it on the surface. This clay is nice and new. It has never been made into anything or recycled. So it should stretch really good, but I like to give it an extra boost of confidence with some water, all right? So this is going to be the inside of my mug. I wanna make sure it's nice and smooth. And now I'm going to take my template here. I'm gonna start from one side and I'm just going to curl this up. Now, as this happens, Hopefully you don't see any cracks. If you see some cracks, try to fix them as they happen. And I'm gonna take and cut off my extra. Now, I have my mug here so that everything is overlapping, if you can see that. I don't wanna cut it perfectly so that they line up. I want them to overlap a little bit, okay? And then this extra piece, I'm going to save, put this off to the side, I'm going to save that and use that later. Now, I'm going to very gently, once I have this 
wrapped around my template, I don't want to mess with this too much more. If I keep, if I keep opening it and closing it, it's going to ultimately decide to just start to crack. Now what I'm going to do here, try to do it so that you can see, is I'm going to take and cut my inside. So see how this overlaps? So I'll say this is the inside, this is the outside, because this overlaps on the top. I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut this at a little bit of an angle. Think of this as like making a ramp for your other piece to go on. So this is no longer just straight up and down. I've cut this at a little bit of an angle. And now I would go ahead and slip and score this on. Okay, now this one I could also cut at an angle if I like. Um, I'm going to take a second here and slip and score this on. Now for my purposes, I like to take the time and kind of smooth this in a little bit. I'm going to leave this seam actually because I don't mind how it looks. Um, I may add some texture here later to enhance this, but I'm going to leave it like so. Okay. Um, I can notice that mine is a little off right here. These should be the same height. So I'm going to take some time to make that height adjustment before I go any further. And again, as I'm handling this, I wanna be super careful that I'm not getting rid of the texture that I took time to add at the beginning. <clears throat> and this is where if you didn't add your texture very deep, your texture may accidentally start to disappear. So this is the basic structure of a mug. If I were to just do a normal mug, what I would do now is I would cut off a circle cut a circle out of a slab. I could set this on top of here. I could trace this circle. I would slip and score it, and then I would attach it on. And there I have a mug. We are going to be using what are called darts. And darts are simply some cuts along the bottom that create a little, a sense of weightlessness at the bottom. I and mean, then it will help to elevate it from the ground. So the darts are gonna happen in a couple of different steps. The first step is I need to decide what's going to be the bottom and what's going to be the top. To be honest, this edge is not looking so hot, so I'm gonna have this be the bottom. So I'm actually going to take this and I want to push, so pretend this is up, or don't pretend, this is upside down. So this is going to be the top where I'm going to be drinking out of. This is going to be the bottom. I'm going to take some of my extra clay here, squish it up, and I'm gonna make some supports because if I don't do this, you can already see, look at what happens, it sinks down. I need the bottom of my mug to be in line with the top of my container here, like so. So having these supports underneath will be very helpful. I'm gonna do this in three or four different spots. I might even make them a little taller later. And this is where if you have not attached a paper towel to whatever your template is, this is where it's gonna start to get tricky because you're not gonna be able to just freely slide this up and down, okay? So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make four marks. So if we think of this as a clock, if we think of 12 o'clock, we think of six o'clock, we think of three o'clock, and we think of nine o'clock, okay? So you can see those marks there. Now I'm going to go through and I'm going to cut a triangle. I could also cut a U shape. Now I'm going to take, and I'm gonna do this on the side that I'm on, so bear with me here for a second. That mark that I made is going to be the middle. Now the deeper or the more drastic this V, the bigger your dart is going to be. The, so the more dramatic of the V, the bigger your dart. The wider your V, the smaller the dart. So I like mine to be about halfway in between. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm using my clay knife here and I'm cutting this out. Okay, now you can see here, I have this chunk that is this triangular shape cut out. Again, I said I could do this in a U as well. You notice how that line that I drew before runs right along the middle. Now I'm going to take this, this is going to be my template, and I'm going to cut out three more of these. So I'm gonna place this here, I'm gonna put this, line up my center lines, and I'm going to cut. 
Okay, now I have, you can see, four triangles cut out of my mug. Now, I need to push my template even further down. So I might use my, use even more clay to make my supports. I like to do these supports along the side. For sure along two sides. This just helps to keep it from sinking, okay? Now, I'm gonna bring my water back because anytime you really stretch clay, especially if you're using red clay, you need to give it a little love and a little, um, you need to coax it a little bit. So I'm gonna take my sides here and I'm going to gently, maybe first I'll add some water to them so they're feeling a little stretchy, but I don't like to have my hands too wet because then it's the clay gets slimy and hard to work with. And I'm gonna take and push these together, okay? I'm not gonna worry too much about slipping and scoring right now. I'm gonna just take and push these together. Rotate and do this to all four of your sides. Take and push. Okay, now if you can see what that looks like, notice how I have my sides pushed together. Now we need to go ahead and slip and score them. This side is dipping in a little bit more than I'd like it to, so I might have to go back in from the inside. I might have to push that out a little bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and slip and score. Just fitting my scoring tool in there to make marks. Adding some slipping and pinching. Okay, clay also likes to be tapped, so I might need to look at it on its side and kind of tap to get it where I want it. Okay, now for the final details, I want to add um, something along the bottom because right now there's just a hole hanging out there. We don't want that, especially if we're going to use this as a mug. So that's why I'm going to take this extra slab that I cut off earlier. And it does have some texture along the bottom, but that doesn't make a huge difference. I'm going to cut myself a rectangle or a square. And I'm going to just slip and score that on. Once I have all the slip on, I'm going to take and tap. Now I want to see these edges along the outside. So I'm not gonna smooth them in. I like how that looks. I'm going to tap. You might wanna take the extra step um, like on this one, if you can see along the bottom, you can see I added that flat slab and then I also cut out a little ring using a flat slab. So I did something like, um, like this and then I took and twisted that around to create kind of an O to elevate it even more. For me, this is going to be enough for this one because this slab is fairly thick. So now I'm not done. You may think I have the outside shape how I want it. Um, I was try to be careful to keep my texture on the outside. Now this is where it gets a little dicey because I'm flipping it now. I'm setting it down here. And if I let it set like this for too long, my darts are going to sink in. So I have to do this next part kind of quick. So I'm going to carefully pull this out. Now there's nothing really supporting this. So this is, it's pretty weak. Hopefully you can see the inside when I show this to you, but I want you to notice that big gap in there, okay? Anytime you're doing something, um, I'm hoping that you can see this. I can see a seam and I can see a gap. Anytime you're making something that you're going to actually be eating or drinking out of, we do not want there to be any gaps. We want it to be smooth. In fact, I'm taking a chunk of clay here, maybe even a little less, I'm going to place it on the inside, and this is where, like I said, it gets tricky. I want to hold it up, and this is almost impossible to show you, but I'm going to take my clay tool here, I'm going to push that in, and I'm going to smooth, okay? Now this is where if you have a container that is super small, this is going to be tricky, but I'm actually even going to tip it because I, I felt my darts sinking in. I'm going to use my hand or my clay tool and I want to smooth that in really nicely. I'm just kind of doing it by feel. I want to make sure that this inside 
is nice and smooth. And now anytime I do something to the inside, I always have to support the outside. I'm gonna smooth this up. I might need to patch in more clay if I feel like it's not smooth, but we do not want any roughness in here. So this is the part where you can really goof things up if you're not careful, okay? Notice how I'm always supporting the outside as I'm doing this. Okay, just about done with that bottom part. I need to take some time on that seam along the side. I need to make sure that's all smoothed in. I will go in later and work with a sponge in that section also, okay? Now the very last thing to address is the lip. Now if you think about drinking on something, you're not going to want to take a drink off of something that is like jagged <laughs> or even that has corners. So I like to take and use my fingers and some water to pinch so we make our lip nice and rounded. Okay, nice and rounded. <clears throat> I'm going around here. I'm smoothing, I want it even. I don't want it lumpy and bumpy. I might be getting rid of a little bit of this outside texture along the lip, but that's okay to me. I might tip it, tap it down in areas where it's higher. I want to make sure that that is nice and smooth, okay? Now, I feel like I've got the inside addressed, so now I'm going to take it, I'm actually going to tip it back over the top of my template. Okay, leave it sit there. And then I'm gonna just do a little more work with these darts because, you know, as you work with the inside, the darts tend to go away a little bit. So I want to bring them back to life a little bit. Almost think of them as folds of a box, okay? Now here, as I leave this dry, upside down is where I could add some final details. So, um, you know, maybe you wanna add some additional texture along the foot. I like to maybe make some marks in here just to make it interesting. Or maybe there's some craftsmanship you need to refine. Okay, along this seam here, I left my seam show through, so I might even go through and just press in with some additional texture because I wasn't crazy about how that seam looked. Okay, get everything nice and even. My darts look good on the side. Okay, I'll get my initials on the bottom here. Always make sure you do that. You always want to sign your pieces in case you get famous one day. We don't know. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so now this is actually going to sit upside down to dry. Now I want to be really careful here. If I let this dry completely, 100%, while it is on my template, on my container, what's going to happen is as it dries, it's going to shrink and seams are going to crack and break. So it's important that I leave this dry on the template partially. I like to take and really loosely cover it up with a bag you know let some of the air in let it sit for a couple hours um, maybe even overnight and then when you come back you want to take it flip it remove the template and let the drying process finish upright like this again if you let it dry completely well it is hanging out like this, you're gonna come back really disappointed because your entire mug is going to crack and break apart and nobody wants that. And once it is fired, it will hopefully come out looking like this and you will be able to glaze it 
um, really nicely. I'll show you one last shot. So if you look at the inside of this one, notice how you can't see any seams. So that was what I was doing on the inside there. I was smoothing over all of the seams, okay? So that is how you make your slab mug with darts. Have fun.